So, Will, you have just finished a two days workshop mm -hmm. uh, here in Prague, organized by Focus Praha. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your impressions from this workshop, or what are your impressions from your visit in the Czech Republic? Well, I was very inspired to see so many people come out. We had 100 people. Um, and we filled the space, and there was a tremendous diversity of people who both uh, been patients in the system, uh, family members, and also people who were psychology students or therapists or even some psychiatrists in the group. And um, I'm very, very inspired at how committed everybody is to taking seriously how do we really help people who are struggling with what we call mental illness or psychosis or madness. And there was a great openness to rethinking some of the things that we've been taught for questioning the assumptions that everyone needs to be on medication or that it just means that you can't recover or there's no cure, really starting to look more deeply at um, how do we really help people. So I am just very, very inspired by the workshops. Have you heard something about the system in the Czech Republic, the psychiatric mental health system? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm here as a learner. There are many things that are similar between the United States and Czech Republic and many things that are different. I know that one of the big um, struggles and challenges that you're facing here is the need for people to have their human rights met to live in the community. It's a human right that someone doesn't have to live in a hospital. They need to be given an opportunity to leave those institutions, to, to have a deinstitutionalization process and to get the support that they need in the community. It's, it's a, a real crime that people can only stay in hospitals in Czech Republic. There need to be resources, there needs to be a commitment, there needs to be uh, political support for getting people to have their freedom out of the hospitals and to live in the community. So this is one of the most important things, I think. And then also I think that there's a real um, stereotyping here. There's a, there's a belief that everyone who has a schizophrenia diagnosis is violent for example, or that we're, 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 we're dangerous. And we see this in the United States, we see this all over the world, that when something happens, a great tragedy happens, there's a crime, it's blamed on everyone with mental illness, and the assumption is that everyone who has this diagnosis, but the reality is that the studies show that people with a mental illness diagnosis are not more likely to be violent or to commit crimes, that alcohol is a big factor in all crimes, for example, and that people who have a mental illness diagnosis are actually more likely to be victims of crime because so often our suffering and our madness and our psychosis is a result of the traumas that we went through. So I really hope that there can be a commitment to join the international movement to overcome stereotypes and to support people's human rights and to really welcome people into the community as equals and to open our hearts and be compassionate towards people who are suffering. Could you give us some advice about how to achieve the freedom? Uh, is it just, um, you, you mentioned joining the international community, but some uh, quick uh, action uh, for achieving this? Well, I think the most important thing is if you are inspired by these ideas, if you feel like we need a change in our mental health system, if you um, believe that there's something in what we call madness or psychosis that might be a spiritual process or might be about healing or might be about creativity, if you really have a different view, to not be alone, to get connected to groups like Focus in, um, in Czech Republic, like Vida, to be involved with other people in the community because there's a whole conversation that's happening. And this conversation is not just happening in Czech Republic, it's happening in other countries in Europe, it's happening internationally. And personally, I believe that if we work together, we really can change the mental health system and we can create a society that's going to start caring for people instead of abandoning them in hospitals and not really giving them the support that they need. Okay, now one personal uh, question. Sure. Uh, how do you feel uh, right now in terms of your diagnosis? Have you got any delusions or uh, any, any uh, voices? Um, I believe that my, my diagnosis was a delusion. It was a delusion on the part of the psychiatrist. Because when you tell somebody that they're schizophrenic, it's like an insult. It's like you're telling them they're not a human being, that they, they aren't really part of the human community. It's like casting a spell on them. It's making them believe that they are incapable and that they can't have a future. The reality is that people suffer for many, many, many different reasons. When someone is diagnosed with schizophrenia, when I was told I was schizophrenic, 
really what it was about is about terror. I was absolutely terrified. I was absolutely withdrawn. I was inside of myself and I was experiencing very, very strong altered states of consciousness because of the traumas that I had been through, because of the experiences that I had been through that terrified me. And what I needed was someone to connect with me and to start listening to me. So today, one of the most important things that I learned is to start to listening to myself and to surround myself with people, not who are telling me that I'm schizophrenic and just take your medications, but surround myself with people who are, who are listening to me, who really are curious about my experience, who aren't just gonna tell me, you know, you're crazy, you hear voices, but are gonna say, what are the voices saying? We're gonna say, you know, some people who hear voices like their voices, that there are artists and there are poets and there are musicians and there are all kinds of people throughout history who have heard positive voices and have really benefited. That many of the people who are considered crazy are also very creative. I needed people to give me positive messages and positive support. And that's what I have now, is I have people around me who are more supporting me. So when I start to struggle, when I start to have difficult moments, I'm feeling really down or I'm feeling, starting to feel paranoid or feel frightened because I still struggle with these things. I'm no longer alone, and that I think is the key thing, and that's why the movement is so important. That's why groups like Focus and Beta are so important, is that they help us to not be alone. And even though we have to struggle sometimes, we learn that we can rely on, on each other, and then we learn we can figure out different ways of struggling with and discovering and exploring our emotions. And maybe for some people that means medications sometimes, but not for everybody, because we know that the medications can sometimes for many people make things worse. And so I'm in a constant process of learning and growing. I've done a lot to um, really see the experiences that I used to think of as scary and psychosis, to think of them as messengers, that they have something to teach me, sometimes even a spiritual gift or a spiritual process, if I can be open to it. And one final question. Yeah. You also work as a therapist. I do, yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you use your personal experience with uh, mental illness or mental problems uh, in your work? I think that the process of being a therapist is basically about a human relationship. It's about connecting with someone. It's about building trust. It's about building a sense of understanding. I can't really trust somebody or build a relationship with them if they don't show me who they are. I want a therapist to share about their own experiences. I want to know if they have things in common with me. That doesn't mean that, um, that in working together I want my therapist to start focusing on themselves or to use our time together for their own needs. That's not what it's about. But I want them to show me who they are in order to make a bridge and make a connection. And so for me, the fact that I'm open about the fact that I've been in the psychiatric system, that I've been diagnosed, that I've um, been told I was schizophrenic, that I've been on medications, this is really helpful for a lot of people because they have a sense that they can connect with me in ways that they wouldn't be able to connect with other people. And I'm very careful. I'm not trying to use our time together to talk about my own problems, but I will share, just like an ordinary relationship, I'll share things that I've learned and say, hey, this is something that I've been through. This is something that I've learned. This is something that helps me. What about you? What do you think of that? Maybe it's different for you. Maybe it's the same. Maybe we can start to compare experiences, just like any kind of human relationship. Great. Thank you for your coming to Prague, Will. I hope this is not your last visit here, and perhaps see you soon. Well, Borg, thank you so much for all of your work and bringing me here, and I really appreciate all the work that you're doing, and it's a really great honor to be invited, and I look forward to coming back. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.